Hey everybody and welcome to episode 249 of Unboxing Wednesdays for comics arriving in stores on Wednesday, August 5th, 2015. All right, Ricky, we have a problem today. I little noticed. problem. I noticed. Tiny little problem. Tiny. You guys probably won't even notice. Uh, we have no comics. What happened? Well, uh, yesterday was a civic holiday, meaning uh, the government gave us a day off for no reason. But not really. Like, a civic holiday is kind of like a BS holiday. Yeah. Because uh, governments and banks and stuff, they have the day off. But, like, Stadium Comics was open. Suck it. Um, you know, a lot of, most retail was open. So it's not like a real holiday. But somehow, this holiday has thrown our whole, um, I guess, logistical situation into uh, tumult. <laughs> I'm going to use the tumult. word tumult. Is yeah. That, is that like Timon's cousin? What? <laughs> like oh, yes. Tumult. It's in the sequel. The direct -to video <laughs> sequel. So we're getting our comics, but we're getting them at like 6 a.m. Wednesday morning, and we're going to have to slave away all wow. Wednesday morning to get pretty, people's pretty. comics put into their bins and out on the shelves and ready for when we open at 10 o'clock. Who's picking them up? I'm picking them up. Oh, suck it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so because of the holidays, slight delay in us actually getting the comics. All of the stores in the uh, greater Toronto area experienced the same delay. Uh, so it's not like they specifically said, hey, screw you, Stadium. So uh, although, you know, sometimes it wasn't just it feels like, that way. It wasn't Canada, it was just GTA? I don't know. I don't know. It could have been all of Canada. Uh, but I know for sure that other stores in the greater Toronto area didn't. Was pick it a books. civic holiday everywhere? Like in most, area? yeah, like the civic holiday is a Ontario, uh, the province of Ontario holiday, uh, but other provinces also celebrate a long weekend today too. They just call it different things. I see. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting episode. We're gonna talk about some of the comics that are coming out. Uh, Ricky's still gonna do his prize thing, uh, and we'll we'll see how it goes. We also. Uh, you know, asked for a few questions to answer earlier in the day, so we've got a we got like three or four questions to answer, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, but anyway, Ricky, let's go ahead and uh, I guess not open some boxes. What? All right, Ricky. Before we get into talking about the comics, I want to talk about some stuff going down on store.stadiumcomics.com. That's our online web store for those of you who don't know. Some crazy, crazy collectors packs up there right now. First of all. Um, only a bit of time left to get in on this one. It's the Star Wars Force Awakens Shattered Empire Collector's Pack. It's the first uh, Disney slash Marvel in continuity post Return of the Jedi story. Yeah, and it's the longest titled Star Wars. Yes, it is. Because uh, I didn't even mention the whole title. What? There's it's, more? Yeah, yeah, there's more. It's like Journey to Star Wars oh Force Awakens. And then, comma, bracket. Comma, Shattered Empire, number one. Anyway, it's uh, it's the lead-in, I guess, to what we're going to be seeing in theaters this December with the new Force Awakens movie. So, really cool. We want to get on board that. We've got uh, collector's packs up now for the first 18 issues of the all-new, all-different Marvel launching in October. We've also got a collector's pack up there for the hip-hop covers. Everybody's been talking about the hip-hop covers. Uh, Marvel's doing 50 in total. The first 18 uh, that are also coming out in October are all on our uh, web store ready to purchase. Again, going back to the Star Wars theme, there's the Chewbacca number one. Uh, Chewbacca, Ricky, going to be drawn by Phil Noto. Yeah, that's Chewbacca the series. weirdest choice, but hey. That's yeah, and any, any excuse for some Phil Noto artwork, I'm, I'm, I'm down for. Um, so there's just a whole bunch of collector's packs. You really want to check it out. Store.stadiumcomics.com. You'll see them there on the front page. Uh, buy all of them. I mean, you know, yeah. why why be stingy, right? Might as well, right? Yeah, might as well. All right, normally, Ricky, I would start with, like, the trades. No, I would start with the collectibles and go on to the trades. I'm just going to run down. A, I got a list here of stuff that we're getting. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to do with myself. Just like, just be present, man. Just be right, present. Just be there. All right, we got um, from Dark Horse Comics, we've got Age of Reptiles, Ancient Egyptians, number three. Barbed Wire number two. Barbed Wire number one was a big seller with that Adam Hughes cover. Uh, and we've got a, a book that I'm excited about called This Damned Band 
number one. You know what that's about, Ricky? Yeah, it's a bit of band that sells their souls to the devil or something. Yeah, they're like a superstar rock band uh, in the 70s. Think like Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath. Uh, and, you know, back then it was very in vogue to say that you were involved in Satanism in some way. And uh, in this case, the band actually does get involved with Satan. It's not like a, a joke thing or, a, you know, for pretend. Uh, so it looks pretty cool. Uh, I actually read a preview of the first issue, um, and it was pretty awesome. Uh, I love the art. Uh, I believe it's Paul Cornell who's writing it, uh, who is an awesome writer, and uh, UK fans may know him from his work on Doctor Who, uh, the television show. Yeah, and it's a mini series, right? It's a mini series. I love yeah. my mini series. Yeah, very finite. Yeah. Uh, from IDW, we've got Long Distance Number Three. Uh, My Little Pony, Friends Forever 19, Star Trek Ongoing 48, TMNT Color Classic Series 3, number 8, and we've got Transformers 44 and Zombie vs. Robots, number 8. Those Transformers books, of course, we would normally show you two covers and a variant for that, because uh, we're just that badass. <laughs> uh, we've also got from Image Comics, we got Fade Out, number 8. Eight House Arclight number two. You're getting Eight nice. House Arclight. Yeah, it's wicked. What? So what's it all about? It's such <laughs> a weird title. Yeah. Well. Okay. Uh, I don't know yet. But, <laughs> but it's badass. Yeah, it's wicked. The first issue had like I think a princess got put into this little like blood puddle. Okay. So then they had to like put the blood puddle into a killed goose. Now they got what? the goose with the princess's soul. I I'm not a hundred percent sure what's going on, but the art is wicked. And I have faith in Brandon Graham because anything he does is wicked. He's Brandon Graham is the guy who does Profit, right? Does Profit, right? And that Island book that just came in. That, the Island magazine. Yeah. Uh, we've got Dark Corridor number one, which is uh, a new release from Image Comics. I know you put it on your pull list, Ricky. Reasons as to why? Uh, the art looks cool. I, I have this terrible thing where I go through previous magazine and if it looks cool. I'll add it to my list, and then I'll read issue one, and then I'll decide if I want to keep it or not. You know, there's worse ways to select comics, right? That's true. So, some people just blindly buy all number ones, and you know, it's too much money. Yeah. For me. Uh, we got uh, Airboy number three, Deadly Class fifteen, Humans number seven, Jupiter's Circle number five, Captara number four, uh, Morning Glories forty seven, Nailbiter fifteen, Outcast. Number 11, uh, Sex number 23, Wicked and Divine number 13, and the one that I'm looking forward to, and I think most Stadium Comics customers are looking forward to, We Stand on Guard number 2, where we once again uh, take the battle guerrilla style yeah. into the yeah. into the wilds of the uh, of the Canadian Arctic uh, against the U.S. invaders. Uh, digging, digging, We Stand on Guard. It's an awesome book. Uh, I'm I'm a little sad in this case that it's only a miniseries. But I know you like the miniseries. A concept like that you can't really take for very long. Well, you can because you know what? Like, inevitably we know the Canadians are going to win. True. So then the Canadians are like, you know, like Mel Gibson and Braveheart. Mel Gibson's <laughs> like, yeah, we won this battle. Now I'm going to invade England and I'm going to like defeat them on their own land. That's what Canada should do. Just like go into the states and. <laughs> Just take, take what's yeah, owed. Yeah, but Braveheart ended with him being cut up into pits. I mean... Well, I'm saying. As long as we're not, like, cutting up any Canadian icons. Like Rita McNeil? Like Celine Dion or Rita McNeil. And Anne Murray? Anne Murray. Like, let's let's keep all them sacred, okay? We've also got Big Trouble in Little China, number 14. Bob's Burgers Ongoing, issue number two. Uh, Broken World number three from Boom Studios, Bunker number thirteen, Cluster number six also from Boom. We've got uh, from Aspen Comics Journey Volume Two issue number one, the first series of Journey. Stadium Comics famously did a uh, store exclusive uh, cover for, uh, illustrated by Vince Sunico and right. Daniel Wong, and uh, available at store.stadiumcomics.com. I'm just saying, you know, it's there if you want it. Uh, Lady Mechanica Tablet of Destinies number four, Pathfinder Origins number six, Bloodshot Reborn number five, Red Sonia Conan number one. Does that have a cover from our friend Mike Ruth? Oh no, uh, that's a store exclusive. That's a store exclusive. Our our friend Mike Ruth did do a store exclusive cover 
um, for uh, a, a comic shop in Buffalo, New York. That's really cool. Uh, we're, we're in talks with Mike right now to come actually to our store nice. and do a signing for that exclusive cover. Well, he's going to so, have copies of the exclusive. Yeah, he's going to have copies of that. So stay tuned for details on that. Mike Ruth is an awesome artist and uh, he deserves all the credit in the world. Uh, regular Show 26, Shadow Volume 2 Number 1, and uh, Spire Number 2 from Boom Studios. A lot of love for Spire Number 1 last month. Spire was wicked. Yeah, you, you read it? Yeah. The art on it was fantastic. Um, really looking forward to Number 2. Woods Number 15 as well is out. Uh, as far as like uh, some independent uh, collected editions, we've got Captain Canuck the series one compendium out. Oh, it's a lot of lot of love for Captain Canuck right now. Um, we can't keep his books in store. Um, so if you want to read up on the history of Captain Canuck, that's a good way to do it. And the Minions Deluxe Hardcover. So there you go. All right, Ricky, before we move on to Marvel and DC, I just want to remind everybody that uh, comicboxer.com is amazing, obviously. It is moving ever forward towards creating uh, peace on our planet. Mm -hmm. It is uh, providing people with the entertainment that they rightly deserve by sending uh, five or more of the month's hottest comics to their door each and every month. And I believe that goes a long way to promote world peace. You're right. And uh, you know, I think if more people were a, a member of Comic Boxer, uh, you know, a little the world would be a little safer place. Um, Anyway, the, uh, the deadline for uh, the July Comic Foxer has just passed. Thank you so much to everybody who signed up this month. Again, another record month for Comic Boxer. Uh, you know, we just keep building and building uh, on this awesome community that we have. Uh, and we invite you all to join us for August, uh, August Box because it's going to be amazing as well. Can you give us a little sneak peek? A little um, tease? For August, mm. I can't. You know, Ricky, I can't give you an August teaser yet, but I can give you a little bit of a July teaser. What? Yeah, uh, a certain comic uh, will be included that has very that evokes very patriotic emotions for us in this room. And we may have talked about the issue two of it, <laughs> like a oh. few minutes ago. So there you I go. Won. <laughs> Also written by one of uh, the comic industry's greatest writers. Uh, no, not you. Not you. Not yet. No. All right, moving on to... Let's do DC Comics. Uh, and we'll also mix a little Vertigo in there as well. We got American Vampire Second Cycle number nine. Batmite number three. Batman Beyond number three. Ricky, stop me if any of these you want to, you wanna, like... Discuss. Discuss. Uh, Constantine the Hellblazer number one gets a second printing. We've got Detective Comics number 43 with a badass cover by Francis Manipal. Uh, Flash Season 0 number 11. Green Lantern 43. And we should mention that, you know, uh, many of these ongoing titles will have uh, the new Bombshell variants. Are they doing more of those? They're doing Bombshell variants. Uh, the the they look, second version of do them. Do they look better than the first one? They look a little bit better, but they're kind of like using the same kind of theme. Uh, but they were very popular, man, despite that. Last but time. I just want the art. I don't want any of like the different a passport or like a postcard. I don't want that stuff. Well, I just want the art. It's a package deal, my friend. Uh, so the bombshell covers, very popular last time. We've got uh, quite a few pre-orders for them again this time. We've got Injustice Gods Among Us here, four number seven. JLA Gods and Monsters Wonder Woman number one. This one seems interesting. It's like Wonder Woman set in the 1960s era. But the new gods are involved in it as well, so uh, mm -hmm. All seems these really gods cool. And monsters are wicked. They'd be good so far, eh? Uh, Lobo number nine, Mad Max Fury Road Max number two, Midnighter number three, Omega Man number three, Starfire number one, second printing. We got a Teen Titans trade volume one, Blinded by the Light. We are Robin number one, second printing. Uh, we've got the DC Comics Bombshells Lois Lane statue. What? Va va voom. <laughs> this one's pretty awesome. It's a Gotham City police badge. So, you know, if you uh, nice. want to hit the streets of Gotham and show some authority. Yeah, but Batman doesn't need a badge, so. Jim Gordon does, though. Yeah, but Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon is now but Batman. <laughs> Jim Gordon is now Batman. He doesn't have a badge. That's true. Although, I guess his robot suit does. 
It does, doesn't it? And it says GCPD on it, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah. Selling out to the man. <sighs> Moving on to Marvel Comics, we've got uh, Age of Apocalypse issue number two, which is the Secret Wars tie-in. Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number three, and there's some variants that go along with that. Uh, Angela Asgard's Assassin uh, in Trade Volume One, priceless. So that's new and soft cover today. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad number five. Bucky Barnes Winter Soldier number ten. Civil War number two. Darth Vader number eight. Uh, Future Imperfect number four. Giant Size Little Marvel AVX number three. Groot number three. Guardians of Nowhere number two. Uh, Guardians team up number nine, Infinity Gauntlet number three, Miss Marvel 17, Red Skull number two, Siege number two, Spider Island number two, and Ultimate and number four. Ricky, which of the uh, Secret Wars tie ins are you enjoying the most? Oh uh, man, the most? Yeah, the most. There's a lot of them out this There's week. A lot of them. Um, I recently just read all of Where Monsters Dwell. Oh, interesting and choice. Though it it re like it looks kind of cheesy, it's it's pretty great. Issue it's pretty three, adult, isn't it? Yeah, issue yeah. three ends with they're about to cut off the dude's uh, member. If and if you look at the front, it looks like uh, like a total like adventure book. Yeah, but it's that not. would be safe for kids and yeah, stuff. But hilarious. apparently, it's not. Uh, I'm enjoying Weird World because of the amazing Dude. visuals did you read inside. Two? I did with the Crystal Man. Wasn't was like, it crazy? Amazing. The cover for that was awesome as well. Uh, I'm also enjoying 1872, the Western version of the uh, the Old West version of the Avengers. Uh, Venom by Reminder, Complete Collection Volume 2 is also out and on shelves today. All right, Ricky, that's it for the comics yeah. Uh, yeah. and the merchandise. So thank you uh, for sitting through the lamest description of, <laughs> of uh, new release comics that we've done yet. It's uh, you know forging new ground here at Stadium Comics. It's beautiful. Really. Yeah. Yeah, it's new experiences for everybody. Uh, Ricky's going to go ahead and do the prize stuff now, and then uh, we're going to finish it up with uh, a few questions that we're going to answer. All right, so last week what we are giving out was Hacktivist number one by the lovely uh, Alyssa Milano and the even lovelier Marcus Toth. And we asked you guys what you would hack into with your lovely finger hacking skills. Uh, Tony Iflow Sandals said, I would hack into Ricky's mind just to see what he's actually thinking while reading Captain Cummings' comments from last week. Nobody will know. Just me and, uh, and Captain Cummings. That's it. Those are the only people who will know. Uh, Ken Ives said, I would hack into Marvel and DC computers and make myself a cover artist. Well, Ken Ives, hopefully you're up to their standards as a cover artist. If you're an artist, please, let us see your stuff. I would... Love to see your stuff, and uh, maybe you could be a cover artist for uh, for Marvel and DC, or even Black Hole Hunters Club. Maybe. Well, who knows, right? Post your stuff, please. I want to see it. We got a little comment last week about the plugins. Mr. Rook Talma said, So I skipped six minutes into the 20 minute video, so I don't have to listen to all the plugs, and he's still plugging Comic Boxer. That's more than a quarter of the video of him talking about his website. Whoa, Kevin. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rook Talma. First of all, we don't do six minutes of uh, plugging straight. None of that. But, I mean, now that you mention it, now <laughs> is a great time. To talk about the benefits of Comic Boxer yeah. Comic and what it does for people. Mm. Um, cures arthritis, yeah. Yeah. Um, alleviates headaches and yeah. back pain, uh, and you know, only some side effects reported of crippling diarrhea. Yeah, so, I, I got that on box one. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, hey man, we gotta pay the bills, <laughs> yeah. I gotta plug some things uh, sometimes. I would argue that probably more time was spent plugging last week. The, uh, the pre-orders yeah. that I did comic box. And I mean, at the end of the day, we talk about other things, and then plug, and then talk about other things. So when you went six minutes into the video, it was most likely... Yeah, like for instance, he missed, he missed uh, the four minute, 30 second mark, where uh, I basically just uh, gave out a million dollars to... You missed it. Some of our viewers, so... <laughs> Yeah, and you missed the three-minute mark in which Kevin plugs comic box. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and the... Uh, one minute through yeah. six minute mark where you see Ricky's butt crack. There's everywhere. Yeah. For, you know, most of the screen time. It's true. Anyway. Unbox my butt crack. 
But the winner goes to Tony Ramirez Jr. who said, I would hack into 21st Century Fox's database and permanently delete the X-Men Apocalypse from ever being released. Saving thousands of individuals from getting their retinas burned to a crisp from seeing that god-awful movie. I mean, come on, Apocalypse looks like Ivan News from Power Rangers, the movie. Just terrible, comma, dot, 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 terrible. Well, you know what? Who knows? The movie could be good. Um, I thought Days of Future Past it was wicked, and when I watched the trailer, I thought it was wicked, so I wasn't too surprised on that one. But Age of Apocalypse, who knows, man? When, when you get a uh, when you get a cast of like Michael Fassbender and like uh, other people, you, you can't go wrong here. Michael Fassbender is amazing, so I I don't know. I have faith in this movie. But congratulations, uh, Tony Ramirez Jr. You win a copy of Hacktivist Number One. So we didn't get the books in time for filming, so we're racking our brains on what to give you guys, and uh, we came up with this little ditty: Whoosh, Secret Wars Number One. The Black Suit Spider-Man action figure variant. Now this thing was flying off the shelves, so we uh, we took some before they flew and hooked you up with this. This is higher than regular cover price, so you know it's going to be good. Now we were fairly disappointed not to get uh, our books in time for filming, uh, which, you know, happens. But let us know in the comments what is the biggest disappointment in your life. <laughs> so... What is a time that you felt extreme disappointment and what happened and why? The most disappointing moment will win a copy of Secret Wars with the black suit action figure variant. And your disappointment cannot involve anything to do with Stadium Comics. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, no entries for disappointment for Stadium Comics. That will be a disqualification. <laughs> That's a disqualification. We're perfect. Now, if that guy from a couple of weeks ago talked about his kids clogging up the toilet, <laughs> That would be amazing, and he would win automatically. So, let us know your biggest disappointment in life, and the winner could win a copy of Secret Wars number one. All right, Ricky, we got a couple questions that were uh, sent in to us by viewers via Twitter and Facebook. Uh, first, uh, Joachim Axe, who is at Joachim Axe, T-W-I-T-R. Uh, he asks, what is the most popular title being pulled at your comic shop nowadays? Batman. Batman, hands down. You know, Ricky, there was a time before you joined the store, before the New 52 happened, uh, where Batman, while it was one of the um, you know higher selling books, was not the most pulled book. You know what book was the most pulled? Uh, Transformers. No, Green Lantern. What? Yeah, like the, the, the Jeff, the Jeff Johns run on uh, Green Lantern through Sinestro. Wow, that really uh, went into the core and the War of Light and right into Blackest Night was. Uh, it was a juggernaut. Yeah. We were pulling more of that than any other book. Julio Zuta, who is at Jeremac on uh, Twitter, asks, asks uh, what brand is the best supplements for comic books? I, th I think he means what, like, who, which publisher is the best? Like, what, like, brand of comics? Of supply, yeah, supplier, uh, maybe. Uh, so, I like, do you have a favorite? Well, um, probably Image. I mean, the base. Right. I, I, I used to be a lot more discriminating. I used to be very hardcore DC, and I what? never read Marvel really? and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, this is going back years ago. But now that I own a comic book store, I, I don't discriminate. I, I love every publisher. I love uh, DC. I love Marvel. Yeah. Uh, I love basically anything that sells. <laughs> I love Valiant for all the, uh, you know, the... the uh, awesome yeah. initiatives that they're always trying to do. I'm going to drop this right here. Drawn Quarterly. Best comic you know, book. We don't even carry them. So. Well, John Quarterly from Montreal, and they produce like literally the coolest comics ever. They used to do uh, monthly like single issues, but now it's just all graphic novels. Cool. And they're the best put together books ever. David G, uh, who is at Comics and Pixels on Twitter, asks, "What are your thoughts on the new Marvel relaunch, and what should we be most excited to pick up?" I am excited for the Marvel relaunch. Uh, I do think that the comic industry, despite everything that you see going on with movies uh, and television shows, I think the comic print and digital industry needs a little bit of an injection. And uh, I think the uh, Marvel, all, all new, all different Marvel is going to do that for yeah. us. 
I'm super excited for a lot of it. But I think Marvel's going a little too Marvel with it. So okay, back in back in the day, they had Scotty Young covers, and you're like, wow, cool, Scotty Young covers. Like these are cool. And then there's like literally a thousand out right now, and you're like, I can't, I can't, right. like, I can't collect them all. It's too much. Then you have the now the hip hop covers. Uh, that are awesome, but you know, once they inevitably sell well, That's true. you will have uh, all kinds of different. You know, wait, wait till the wait till the '80s hairband covers <laughs> coming out oh, uh, in in January. I'm predicting it right now, January 2016 '80s hairband covers, Marvel Comics. Uh, I think a big book that is going to catch a lot of people by surprise is Doctor Strange number one. Uh, you know, he's been without a series for so long. We've got uh, yeah, the got Benedict Cumberbatch movie coming out. Uh, he's got an axe. Um, the the art looks amazing, and I think I'll, I, I think I think the time is right for uh, some Doctor Strange success. And I think that's going to be a very popular book. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of things going for it right now. All right, that's it for the questions. Thanks everybody for watching this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed our uh, different take on this week's new new releases. All new, all different. All new, all different unboxing Wednesdays, man. Uh, speaking of all new, all different, we did our Sidekick store launch last uh, Saturday, where we opened that up uh, for the, for the day. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Thanks to everybody who came out for that. We put some comics out in the parking lot and stuff like that too. It was pretty cool. Uh, beautiful day, uh, weather wise. We were very lucky and uh, had an awesome turnout. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Uh, watch all of our videos. Follow us on the websites you see listed here on the screen. And we'll see you all next time for episode 250 of Unboxing Wednesdays. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your comics this week. We sure will when they come in bright and early Wednesday morning uh, and we have them ready for all of our customers. See you later.